Hello everyone, and welcome to Yoshi Won Kenobi's Deadly Weenies deck. The deck that plays like white weenies without playing white, because we're playing Golgari colors of green and black. So how does the deck work? Well, the deck is a death touch deck. And the idea is that we play Falmire Knight, Typhoid Rat, Moz Viper, as well as Tejuju Blyblade as 1 mana 1-1 one, one death touch creatures. And then we have the payoffs. Finn the Fangbearer that got introduced in Kaldeheim is going to give our opponents poison counters. And if you have Finn on the battlefield, then it's like if all your 1-1 one, one creatures are suddenly hitting for 4. Because you only need 5 attacks to go through to poison your opponent to death. So Finn gives us this ability. Then we have the Hooded Blight Fang, which means that whenever one of your creature attacks, you drain your opponent for one. Also, your creatures deal a lethal damage to Planeswalker if they have that touch. So if you have one or maybe even two Hooded Blight Fang, then you have a ton of unavoidable damage. So that's the core of the deck. We're also playing three Chavels, uh, because it, it's a 1-3 that touch for two. So it plays into the Death Touch team, but also it encourages your opponent not to block with creatures. And they're already not encouraged to block because your creatures all have Death Touch. So you'll notice that in our list we're playing no removal at all. And the reason for that is that you want to apply enough pressure to your opponent with your attackers to force your opponent into making bad blocks. And that is how you remove opponent's creatures. And you'll see that in one of the games coming up shortly. The only tricks that we're playing are Snakeskin's Veil, in order to protect our key cards, mostly Finn and the Hooded Blight Fang, from our opponent's removal spells. And also, we're, we're playing a lot of redundancy, and that's the third part of the deck. We're playing four copies of Call of the Dead Dwellers, as well as four Lurus, to keep on bringing back Finn and our creatures with that touch, or the Hooded Blight Fangs in the case of Call of the Dead Dwellers. So that our deck just keeps on spawning more and more and more death touch creatures until the opponent just can't deal with them. Has the chump block with like their love struck beast, your typhoid rat, because otherwise they'll lose too much life. And then you're, you're really just making the evil laugh at that point. And yes, there, there's just a never ending stream of death touch creatures with this deck. And Agadim's Awakening is also playing that role. So with Agadim's Awakening, Lyris, and Call of the Dead Dweller, you can revive multiple Dead Touch creatures in a turn. You can draw cards if the opponent jumps with Chevel. You can even draw cards with Falmire Knight if the game gets long enough. So this is very linear, very streamlined deck. You just play a ton of Dead Touch, and the opponent is going to get overwhelmed, just like in the days of White Weenies. Except that this time, it's Deadlier Weenies. So let's see this deck in action, with some games! Your opponent is Moloch Bahal! Which I believe is Good Morning in Merfolk. But don't quote me on that. So for this hand, it looks pretty decent. We are missing some of our payoff cards. But you gotta take two lander with stuff to play. Let's open up with our Temple of Malady. Drawing that to the bottom. Kind of wish we had a second swamp instead of a second forest, but that'll be okay. It just means we can't play Lurus quite yet. But it doesn't really matter. We don't really want to play Lurus until turn 4 anyways. Another Lurus, a little subpar. Let's go Chevel. You want your Arc Fiend's Vessel to die, and pretty soon we'll want it dead too. If you just look at Chevel, he's like, I want you dead. Bounty money's gonna make for some nice necklaces. Alright, opponent brings Lurist into their hand. Hmm. No blocks. You can lifelink one. Our hand is so subpar in terms of aggression that I think we just want to draw off of the Foulmire Knight. Now we're talking Hooded Blightfang. 
And we have a bounty on the Archfiend's vessel. And we should, I mean, that nothing's about to turn into a demon. We definitely want to pay some guy from Ikoria's main town to go and deal with it. Although if we deal with it, then it might become a 5-5 demon. I, I don't know. Alright. Well, we have a black source. Opponent's mana is fully opened. So I think we go main phase Blight Fang. Keep the snakeskin veil opened. Until we know what's up. Move to combat. Good attack. Drain you. Hit you. Seems like you're holding up a Bone Crusher Giant. But I'll hazard it to Juju Blight Blake anyways. Pass the turn. Heartless Act? What do you have? Village Rights? Probably a Village Rights. Yes. Called it. You draw two, we draw one. That's the only thing that would make our opponent hesitate. And now the opponent lurises and brings back a 5-5 demon. Flying is a bit of a problem. Crocs I really don't care about. We've got lurises to throw to the garbage for days. I mean, it looks like that thing is melting garbage. But that, that's what that white smoke is, right? Okay. Kazanduul's Fury takes care of our bounty hunter. Oh, but what do we have in the graveyard? I do think we want to cast Lurus. But we're short on black sources to bring back our bounty hunter. I'll go Lurus nonetheless. Ping you for four. And we're keeping Snakeskin's Veil up. Up and ready to go. And now's the Lurus Demon turn. Makes sense. And our turn is going to be the Chevel Foulmire Knight. Another Arcane's Vessel. No, no, that's one from the graveyard. Okay, makes sense. The 5 5 Demon and the 2 1 Murpho Zombie. Alright, well, we're definitely playing Chevel. We're going to be playing the Falmire Knight. But before that, we should attack. Opponent is going to block the Hooded Blight Fang with a Triton. That's probably the only block. That's okay. We'll revive it with the Call of the Dead Dweller. And we'll keep Snakeskin Veil. Or if you don't block it, we'll cast the Falmire Knight. And pass the turn. A little surprised you didn't block the, the bl Hooded Blight Fang. Seems like a good trade for the Triton. For our opponent. Alright. What is your next move, opponent? Have a Magmatic Chandler. You can Croxa us again. It's true. We have no way of dealing with that Lurus. Well, our only way of dealing with that Lurus is by killing our opponent. Which is the game plan with this deck. Whatever they put on board, you deal with it by defeating the opponent itself. With an army of Death Touch creatures.
My opponent has chosen to play the Magmatic Chandler from the graveyard. I'm casting the full Croxa. Alright, well, since you're not casting anything that removes my stuff, maybe it's time we drop the veil. Hmm. Uh, let's keep let's keep the veil. And then, all right, swing for five. Sure, don't want to block with that anyways. And you have a big Crocs on the field. Let's see what we can do against that. I'll admire Triton. So here we want to target whatever opponent is most likely to block with to disincentivize blocking with it. Attacking with everything with Death Touch. Mostly for the drain. There goes our Hooded Blight Fang. That's okay, because we'll draw a card off of Chevel. Which was the entire point of that bounty token. And we only have Lurises in the graveyard. And in our hand. I guess we're Lurus flooding this game. Alright, draw guard. Rats. Rats are okay, it's another dead touch creature. Let's bring back the Blight Fang. The payoff just gotta keep bringing it back. This time with Menace and Death Touch. Double Death Touch. Nothing like putting Death Touch counters on Death Touch creatures. But if you look at it, it really deserves the double Death Touch. Which of course does really nothing more than single Death Touch. Opponent's going after our hand. That is fine. I have no intentions of blocking here. We don't want to give back the Crocs on the graveyard. Also with the Hooded Blight Fang, we're draining our opponent for 5 just by attacking. Which might force our opponent to block with the Lurus. Although the Mire Triton comes back, maybe the opponent can get away without it. There's going to be some math involved in the next turn. Also, our opponent has four cards in hand. They can't all be lands, can they? Alright, so Mire Triton. The card that doesn't cost a card. And gains the very important two life. Landfall. You can sink all your men into the Skyclave Shade. It's an option, but that thing doesn't block. Soul Shatter. Has converted mana cost on creatures and planeswalker to control. Alright, so that'll be our Lurus. Which is a shame. It's always a shame to lose Lurus. Then the opponent has three blockers. We have five attackers. We drain for five, so opponent set a virtual three. At least two points of damage is gonna get through. Snakeskin Veil can allow us to get that last point of damage. Definitely blocking that. And now the opponent can't would need to double block the Blight Fan. So I think we target Lurus, because the because of the lifelink the opponent's gonna be forced to block with Lurus. Which 
Drain you for five. We're getting at least two attacks in. We're, we're getting at least three points of damage in. So the opponent has to block with Lyris the lifelink. Yeah, there's no way out, opponent. You have to. You gotta block. And you should really deal with the Hooded Black Fang. If I were you, that's what I'd do. And that's our removal. By forcing your opponent down to low life totals, we're forcing bad blocks. And drawing a card. Oh, That is so good. That is so good. Best land to draw ever. Let's go with the... The Juju, Lurus. And they're back! And if we had another another black mana, we could have brought back something else with Lurus. Just too many Death Touch creatures. Even if we didn't have this amazing draw, we still have the, the Blightfang with Menace is a lot of trouble for opponent. And even though they kept the Lurse on board for multiple turns, it just didn't matter. Too much Death Touch creatures, too much aggression, and their life total forced them to throw away their creatures. We are playing Deadly Weenies on MTG Arena Standard against Quazen. Or QA for Zinc. One of the two. Alright, let's keep this. Hopefully we can top deck a fin, which we did. So that was awesome. Because we get to play a one drop, one drop, one drop fin. Poison you to death. You have something that flashed, don't you? Wildborn Preserver? Or I guess it's more likely that it's an omen of the sea. Almond of the sea. Do you see the almond? Two top, and our opponent clearly knows what we're playing. So hopefully it's nothing. Yeah, I'm really out of hope on this. Okay, Elspeth's nightmares. Could be worse. Let's play this for black. Follow our night. Finn. The card that will finish you off. And you're at four poison. And you see that we have nothing in our hand. So all you have to do is kill Finn. And us not draw a second Finn or a call of the Dead Dwellers. Okay, I'm confused. Okay, that makes more sense. The opponent just wanted to give us false hope. Well, I'll keep on stacking dead Dutch creatures. Problem is our opponent's exiling our graveyard this turn. So reviving Finn is no longer an option. Now we need to draw one. Which is a lot harder. But that's okay. I mean, we've top deck one when we ask for it, so let us draw Finn once more, deck. Not sure what decision there is. You're exiling my graveyard and you're not taking my Moss Viper. Because it's poisonous. And even Nelspit's Nightmare, you don't. You don't take poisonous reptiles out of your opponent's hands. That it's just uncalled for. Also, we need no shadows verdict here. Okay, Ashiok. You know what? 
I, I don't care that much about your Ashiok. I care about hitting you in the face with Death Touch creatures. As is clearly the case from all the Death Touch creatures I'm throwing at you. Of course, really hoping to draw Finn next turn. Still. This deck does that a lot. Come on, draw Finn, and when you draw it, it's epic. When you don't, well... The Nightmare Muse is... Pretty much what it turns into. Your opponent's just toying with you, putting you in a nightmare until you poison it to death. But yeah, we, we do need that to happen for the prophecy to be accomplished. Pointed Yurions. So opponent's dead to Finn. Ah, oh, I'm disappointed. It's not gonna stop me from attacking you with all I've got. Locking Chevel, locking one dead Dutch. Do you give me the card? Yes, you do. And there's most of our pins. And you draw Call the Dead Dweller. So I cast that. Yes, more Death Touch counters. And then you get an Ultimate Ashiok. And that's not nice. But you get to put Finn, Falmer, and I in Moss Viper. It's not the most threatening of Ashiok's ultimate. But with all that, our opponent is down to 8. And that's 4 poison. So if our opponent alts Ashiok, then there's no more Ashiok on the battlefield. Oh, and that's a mute moot point. Opponent's still dead to Finn. I'm going to ignore the fact that their opponent is dead to Finn and just keep on poking. Just more dead touch weenies. You have a planeswalker that's been summoning tokens every turn. And you're still dead to certain top decks. Now, who did Blightfang? Is lethal? Finn. I want Finn. Moss Viper. I already have a couple of those. Felmire Knight. So now you have blockers. And your fear you. So you get to Yorion, Mies Mine Tome. Do your stuff. So now you're no longer dead to Finn, but you're dead to Hooded Black Man. So hopefully that's what we'll draw. If you give your opponent enough top decks, eventually they will top deck the card they need. Which is why I need to close out games. Yes! <laughs> eventually it is gonna happen. I could not have scripted this better. I mean, we got it. And that's why we attacked the face and not the planeswalker. We gave ourselves top decking options. And the Blight Fang does it exactly after an Ashiok ultimate. And that's how you do it with Death Touch Weenies. Sometimes there's just too many.
We are playing Deadly Weenies on MTG Arena Standard. And our opponent is Tikon Oli. This is a fairly slow hand, but we'll keep it anyways. We're on the draw after all. We get a Temple into Moss Viper. Now we can go multiple Light Fangs. That's one plan. Light Fang our opponent out. Let's blink is a tempo by the looks of it. And we are getting out tempoed. Because we want three creatures on battlefield by turn two. Of course that's dream scenario. We'll settle for a moss by viper. Shuffle. Oh! Play the hooded blight fang into a counter spell. Opponent decides that her snake needed some frostbiting. What they didn't know is that snakes are actually cold blooded. I guess it doesn't really matter. I mean, that frostbite really is a big bite from a frosty monster. Alright. The opponent got the draw cards. Plays a mountain. Can activate. No, can't activate yet the faceless haven. Alright, we have a fin. So we will play this for green. Attempt to cast Chevel, trying to beat a counter spell. Chevel should resolve. We'll see. Maybe our opponent doesn't know what's up. Opponent bounces a blight hack. That will be mana efficient, we'll play Finn. So now we have the two legendary human death touch warriors. Oh that guy's a rogue. He's sneaky like that. He's more experienced. In the art of poisoning the enemy. You, you might see him there with a shield and an axe. But really he has like one of these blow dart thingies. And we're going to use it against our opponent. Alright, well let's go with the Blight Fang. Opponent will Frostbite Finn. No, oh, you saw it coming. You really did, we did play it earlier. So you did see it coming. I don't put four poison counters. And yeah, you're dead on board if you don't do anything. Well, I guess you have a faceless even, so you're not actually dead on board, but... Close enough. Snow-covered island, six mana board wipe. Bone-crushing art to Juju. Casting said Bone Crusher Giant. And now you have an incentive not to block. But will you? Will you block? Blocking Chevel. We'll still draw the card. And you're at six poison counters. As you play Lurus. Because Lurus brings Death Touch to you. The unending stream of Death Touch creature has begun. And you only have two poison life left. Well, four, but... All fin triggers are doubled. Which means you're in for double trouble. Can you block this? Actually, you can. You have faceless havens. And I think we attack. Let's see what's up. Faceless Haven is going to have to block one of the Death Touch creatures. Otherwise, that's game on the spot. Which means that Lurus will get to bring it back. Death Touch. More Death Touch. I see Finn, you see Scatter, Finn, Scatter, Finn, 
Oops, you don't have enough mana to scatter the second fin. Now you have to deal with Finn and Luris, because Luris will keep on bringing Finn back all day. And even if you deal with them, then the Call of the Dead Dweller is going to bring back more Finns and more Death Touch creatures. Feel that poison running through your veins of the... Well, through the veins of your fictional character. Alright, that's one way to deal with them. For now. Because they're back. And they want blood. In the meantime, we'll attack Luris. I mean, it's a 3 2 lifelink. What's not to like? And we have our legendary pair of human poison ears at the disposal. And the opponent can't take it. Just too much poison. Too much poison to the face. We are playing Deadly Weenies on MTG Arena Standard against the Lost Knight. Trying to get a wins for a standard event. Why not? Alright, we have a Moss Viper and a Blight Fang. So we'll say that's good enough. We go Forest Moss Viper, Dark Boar Pathway, Falmire Knight keeping up Snakeskin to. Dodge the Bone Crusher Giant. Then we'll play the Hooded Blight Flang and swing for a ton of damage. Okay, a small ton of damage. So I guess like multiple kilograms of damage. Yes, we'll swing for multiple kilos of damage. How intimidating is that? As you Husher the Fallen. Well, let's start with the attack. Dodge my Moss Viper. And I'll pass a turn back. Although I must say that a factory that produces 1 1 tokens is not exactly good for us. Luminarch Aspirant. Go on, pump your creatures. I don't care. All my creatures have Death Touch. And you know what t Death Touch does, right? It touches you with death. As you will drain you! With the big black snake. Oozing venom. Look at its fangs as it's oozing, oozing venom. Or... It's not, but... Hopefully it's venom, it's more intimidating. Clearian spirit. Alright. The opponent's really going all in with the weenies. But are the white weenies good enough to stop the black and green poisonous weenies? As we hit you with Blight Fang. Let's set this to green. Play Blight Blade. Sure, pass the turn back. You can keep on putting plus one, plus one counters on your Aspirant. And boosting your creatures. It's not enough. Actually, it might be enough. Let's count. That's ten. Okay, it's starting to be damage. That is meaningful. But still, poison will prevail. That's the new mantra for this deck. PvP. Poison will prevail. That's annoying. Not flying one ones. They are our true weakness. Ooh, that's good. Actually, that's game good. Hit you for. Well, we'll drain you for eight to begin with. That's always a good start. And now you have to block everything. How fun is that? And of course everything has death touch. Because otherwise it wouldn't be as fun. I mean, we're attacking with a bunch of 1-1s. One but a bunch of 1-1s one that are hitting like trucks. Well, small trucks. More like taxis. 
Yes, so we have a bunch of Death Dutch creatures hitting like taxis. Take that opponent. Does our opponent have any way of gaining life, is the question. Because we could use the snakeskin to kill both the creatures, but then we'd leave ourselves opened. I think we'll just go with this. Let the Death Touch do its thing and make sure that the Hooded Blightfang can swing for the lethal point of damage that's missing. And our opponent sees it and resigns. A victory for the Death Touch Weenies versus the White Weenies. We are playing Deadly Weenies on MTG, MTG Arena Standard against Al Spigzagaga. How much do we believe? I think we mulligan this. This you will have to keep. Yes. So our plan is Falmire Knight, Blightfang, Blightfang. God, that was a shock. Question is, is there a fall of bone crusher? Mono red, mono red versus black weenies. Interesting. Well, Golgari weenies. Not afraid to take some damage. Deal some damage. And get the hooded blight fang set up. Bone Crusher? Yes. Well not yes, I'm not happy about the Bone Crusher Giant. Wasn't very much I could do about it. Yeah, I'll take that. Let's use two blight fangs is enough to take you down. The drain's certainly a pain. Panax hardened and forge. Drain you. Do you double block? Alright, we kill the Annex, especially since it's under 4 power. We bring back the Blight Fang. Now it Menace. You will never steal cards from my deck, Robber. Don't have Ember Cleave. Rimrock. Night Shock? Double Rimrock Knight? Ah. Don't think I want to find out. That's pretty good. I mean, our counter clock's just pretty good. And Mono Red doesn't have many ways to deal with Hooded Blight Fangs. So we'll just ensure our clock is ticking. All we needed were a pair of Hooded Blight Fangs. Ah, Bone Crusher Giant. Well, if we would have blocked Fervent Champion, we probably would have been fine. Now the opponent needs to kill it, one of the Hooded Blight Fangs. And we're not blocking. And our opponent knows that's so our opponent resigns. 
and Golgari Weenies just outpaces Red Deck wins. I hope that you've enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe, it won't cost you any mana, and it greatly helps to support this channel and keep the awesome videos coming. Until next time, may the fun be with you.